Hey guys, it's Pedro back with another interview covering Valorant Champions 2024. For this occasion, I'm here accompanied by Chronicle, a fanatic who are coming off of a loss to Heretics in the first round of the upper bracket to thus go down to the lower bracket of said competition. So, Chronicle, really do appreciate you taking the time and doing this interview real quick. Despite the loss, I, I really do appreciate that. Um, but still, um, coming out of this with a, a loss to start off the team's playoff run, gotta give you the obvious first question. Uh, how are you kind of taking in this result for you? Mm, quite embarrassing, just because, as we said before in press, um, we didn't play our game again. We were in some panic mode when we started to lose some easy rounds, and it went to embarrassing score on the first map. And also on the second one, at the start of it, we played like 3-9. Or it could be even worse if we wouldn't win some crucial runs with the, also with the hero clutch and other than that. I mean, it's just like it could be like a very, very, very bad game for us uh, if uh, like hero couldn't clutch the game uh, for us without that without one round. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing really else to say. We just trolled, I think, again. Yeah, uh, I, I remember back then in an interview you did with VLR uh, following the loss to DRX, I believe, where you kind of highlighted the team's communication as like one of the biggest reasons or probably the biggest reason as to why the team lost. Do you feel like this sort of situation played out itself again today? Yeah, I think it was even worse just because uh, the communication was even worse on the, again, on the same parts of like first map and uh, second half of the second map. Um, it's just like nothing really else to explain. When we really need to show up, we for some reason don't want to or like can't to. And uh, it's quite annoying, obviously. And the f most important thing is we have a match tomorrow. So it's not like we can do that much for fixing the stuff. So it's a quite annoying uh, s stage for us where uh, we somehow need to not give up not uh, uh, focus up on the bat and try to fo oh, wait, sorry try to mm -hmm. try to step up the game yeah yeah for sure that's definitely the, the one of the, the the biggest things to to focus on from now until tomorrow when it's, since that's going to be where you guys will be playing at um i want to ask you about just sort of your point of view on how the team was preparing for heretics because the last time fanatic faced off against heretics was in stage one finals Obviously, you guys came out on top on that one. Um, what, what 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 was the approach for this occasion? Given it's been a long time since that time up until now, uh, from your point of view, I think there is like a different things happened there. Um, overall, like after mm, failure on Shanghai, uh, we got even more challenges for for us. First of all, we had to qualify for uh, champs. It's kind of slightly more pressure. Also, we lost our best player, according to almost everyone. <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, like, again, we didn't have that much time to prepare compared to the teams who didn't qualify to Shanghai. And the worst thing about it is that every single team in our group was actually preparing instead of us. Like, we were playing Shanghai and we lost it and there was, any other team was kind of preparing. They had a whole month for that. And it was also annoying but with these challenges, we didn't feel any that, that much stress. We just were chill. We were playing to enjoy the game. And uh, obviously that our environment uh, slightly changed the hero since it's a new player. Everyone knows that changing the players always helps with the environment at the first days of the new team, new roster. So yeah, it also helped us. And we were just like, uh, first matches were kind of scary. But after that, we just... The main difference between the stage two and champs right now is just the thing that uh, we were chill and we were just focusing on the game and we were playing to win rather mm -hmm. than playing not to lose. Um, I, you mentioned here, I want to ask you just sort of, um, especially in Abyss, you know, at the very uh, late stages of the map, obviously Hero kind of fell into the void a few times. Um, I want to ask you just, I, I know, I know uh, uh, you can't really speak uh, for Hero just like, because you're not hero, obviously, but um, do you feel like the the pressure was kind of getting to hero, you know, in light of those plays, or was it just sort of something that affected the entire team as a whole in, in that second map? I think there is two things. Uh, first one is that we had to adapt to heretics, and we played something that we didn't really play that much on our practice. It was quite specific uh, game plan against them, 
it worked, but in some rounds it might actually affect uh, Hero because it also affected me in some rounds because I was late with some util. But it's a different topic to talk about. And the second thing, I think, yeah, it's just about stress because I don't remember a single time where Hero dropped off the map uh, on our prax, so I think it's also stress. Yeah, for sure. Uh, unfortunately, that it kind of happened, but still, like, it was in a, it was this, in a stretch where um, you guys were coming back from 9-3 down. Sure, you guys lost, so, I mean, it's not really a good uh, thing to kind of absorb, but still, you know, what were some of the, the, the biggest takeaways you saw from just um, that second half that you feel the team can kind of, like, look at and say, okay, we can use this for tomorrow and just stuff like that? Mm. I think that was the thing that we finally accepted that we can lose the game. Like, it's fine, absolutely. We don't need to be stressed about it or we don't need to be nervous. Like, it's just happening. Everyone in the game loses more than winning. Like, it's a proven fact. Everywhere, like esports, sports, whatever. And uh, you have to come to the games with a proper mindset to actually winning it. But, uh, like, again, compared to the second half and the first half of the same map, uh, you can just uh, see, like, what happens when the team is stressed and when it's not. And again, on second half, when people already accepted that we might lose the game, that's fine. It's uh, happening. Uh, they might didn't play the best game, but we played even worse. So we just need to focus up and uh, actually try our best. At least for stats, I would say. I mean, stats, no one cares about it right now, but uh, well, it's just like, and I'm throwing it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just overall, yeah. You, you just need to focus up and win the game, and that's it. Nothing else matters. I, I believe, um, I think it was Rian's 4K at the very end of the match that kind of forced overtime. Um, what was going on within the team's comp when that happened? You know, what, what, what exactly happened within the communications and that aspect? Uh, from that point specifically? I think, I mean, I was in the two versus five already and after that, uh, so it killed me with the ulti, I mean, it's fine. But overall, if we compare it again to the comms, I think it was mostly about that people were obviously sad because they lost it. And I don't I don't even know what, they hap ha what happened there, how he killed three people there. But I, I'm pretty sure it was quite annoying since he actually did it. And uh, people were sad and silent. I mean, I can't really blame them for that because uh, Everything was in our hand and it's just like only one gun in the game, like a proper gun against us just kills free insta and uh, we were like one step away from winning a map and maybe going to the third one where everything could be better. But yeah, uh, it's just all about like people were silent again. People start to be stressed because they felt like they can win a game and uh, they were trying not to lose. So uh, again, you're just coming back to that state where you're not performing well. You're just losing the game because you can't focus up. It just kind of put you guys back into the the same position back in the start of the series, right? Basically, that that one play alone. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just something about the mindset. If you want to win uh, and you don't want to lose, you will try to properly manage your stress levels. You will try to experience with or ex experiment with it. And sadly, this one didn't work out. People were kind of stressed. I felt it. Uh, I, I saw it, and. Uh, Again, it's just something that we need to work on right now for the next match. Try to talk with the guys, find a solution, maybe do some briefing techniques. But I mean, we are always doing that, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just simply like that. As, as a result of this loss, you now guys, you guys now face against G2 tomorrow in the lower bracket. Um, short time to prepare from now until then. Um, if there's one thing. Or what is the one thing that you feel the team has to kind of work on the most um, from now until then in terms of just facing G2 from your point of view? I didn't really understand the question. Can you repeat it? Yeah. Of all of the, the, the issues that kind of affected the team today against Heretics, what is the most important number one thing from your point of view, from your eyes, that you feel Fnatic has to work on the most from now until your next match against G2? The same thing I spoke here for 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> comes and uh, comes and stress. It's the most important thing and you actually can really affect it because anything else we tried in the game against heretics, you can't fix it just on the next day. It's almost impossible. Uh, we will not have any prax or proper preparation against the G2 since it's just only one day. And uh, the thing is, 
becomes the stress. You can actually manage it properly if you like actually step up again, as I said before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just simply it. Well, hopefully you guys are able to do that from now until tomorrow. Chronicle, thank you so much for taking the time doing this interview. Really do appreciate it, despite the loss. And of course, best of luck for you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.